All right, welcome to Unit 2, Exploring Two-Variable Data. Today we're going to focus on topic 2.5 on correlation. Now, what the heck is correlation? Well, it's actually a pretty important uh, term and a pretty important value that we're going to use a lot in the rest of this unit. So let's dive right into it. So we need to find a better way to measure strength of a scatter plot. Now, if you remember from the last topic, in a scatter plot, it's very easy to see direction and form. You can easily tell if a scatter plot is going positive or negative, or you could see if there's a line, you could see if it's curved. That doesn't take a whole lot, but strength can sometimes be a little vague. So statisticians have found a way to actually measure the strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables by assigning the strength a numerical value. We call this numerical value the correlation. Remember, strength is like the one thing that ties it all together. If you could clearly see the direction and you can clearly see the form, then it's got to have some good, strong strength. So we really want to find a more mathematical way to actually measure the strength of a scatter plot. Let's actually measure the strength of the relationship between two quantitative variables. All right, and this is where correlation comes in. So um, correlation has a very specific definition. Correlation measures the direction and strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. The symbol that we use for correlation is simply a lowercase r. And sometimes you'll see it referred to as the correlation coefficient. So remember, a coefficient is a value um, that helps us do something, right? And that's why it's called the correlation coefficient. And we use the letter R. Maybe we use the letter R because um, there are two R's in correlation, right? So R, so it's pretty important. Who knows? So everything that's important is what I underlined. Um, so correlation does measure direction because it is positive or negative. If it's positive, then your data, your relationship is going up. If it's negative, your relationship is going down. It measures strength, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but here's what's really important, right? Is correlation is only used if you have a linear relationship between your two variables. If you don't have a linear relationship, don't use correlation. We're actually going to emphasize this again at the very end of this video, but correlation is specific for data that has a linear form to it. And the last most important thing is it does have to be looking at the relationship between two quantitative variables. We would never talk about correlation between categorical variables. And this is actually something that happens a lot in the real world. In fact, I hear people that misuse the word correlation all the time. Like they might say something like, oh, there's a correlation between um, a person's gender and a person's eye color. Well, no, there might be a relationship there but absolutely no correlation because gender and eye color are categorical. So don't ever use the word correlation if one or both of your variables is categorical. A lot of people mess that up in the real world. All right, now, as I said, correlation is a mathematical formula. To find R, it does involve some math, right? So here's the formula. It's a very ugly, ugly formula. It does start off with um, finding your z-score. So basically it finds the z-score for every single x value, right? So remember scatter plot is a bunch of data. Each dot has an x value and a y value. So what it does is it finds the z-score for each x value and it multiplies it by the z-score for the y value. And it does that for every single point. So for every single point on a scatter plot, it takes the x z-score and multiplies it by the y z-score. Remember, how do you find a z-score? You take your value, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. Then it adds up all of those products, all of those products. It adds them all up and it multiplies it by 1 divided by n minus 1, which is the same thing as dividing by n minus 1. Now, I'll be honest with you. You don't have to know this formula at all, but um, we're going to use technology, usually a calculator or a computer, to find R for us. But I did want to show you the formula. That way you can at least understand it is a mathematical formula. It does take the actual values from your scatter plot, and it does some math with them to get this. But at no point will I ever, ever expect you to know how to use this formula to calculate R by hand. But because it does use z-scores, it is important to understand that if you change units, you will not change correlation. If you switch x and y, you will not change correlation because this is multiplication, right? So even if I flip-flop the order I did this, I multiplied the y's times the x's versus the x's times the y's, that's not going to change anything when it comes to multiplication. So if you change units, like you convert your data from inches to feet or feet to meters, not going to change correlation. Even if you flip-flop who's the explanatory and who's the response, 
that's not going to affect correlation. Now, that does affect your problem, right? Because we talked about how specific you need to know who's the explanatory and who's the response. But in terms of correlation, correlation is just looking at the strength, the connection between those dots on the scatter plot. It doesn't really care what the units are, nor does it really care who's X and who's Y. All right, so now let's talk about some cold, hard facts about correlation. There's a lot to correlation I want you to understand, so we've got to go through a whole lot here. First, correlation can be positive or negative, hence why it measures direction as well. So a negative cor correlation is not bad. It simply means your data is going down from left to right. If your correlation is positive, it simply tells you that your data is going up from left to right. Now, I mentioned this already, but I'll mention it one more time. That's how important it is. Correlation is only used to measure the strength of a linear relationship. So if you see a curve or a parabola, don't even think about using correlation. All right, more cold hard facts. Well, correlation measures strength. How does it do that? Well, correlation is a number between negative one and one. So think of correlation like as a, as a scale. It's either as low as negative one or as high as positive one. And it could literally be any number in between those two. Now, the closer you are to one, the more strength it is, right? If your correlation is very close to one or exactly one, you have a very strong relationship between your two quantitative var variables. The closer you are to negative one, you are also very, very strong, but just negative, right? So think of positive one, like your dots are forming a perfect straight line. Negative one, again, not bad by any means. It just means your dots are forming a perfect line going down in a negative direction. Now, zero is going to be very, very weak. A correlation with, with, of zero would literally be like your dots, are, you can't even tell if your dots are going up, going down, who knows, it's a little like a swarm of bees. Or you know what else is another good picture of a correlation of zero is a perfect parabola. Think about that for a second. One of the main things about correlation is it only works for data that is linear. Well, if you have a giant curve and it's pretty obvious, again, that would come back with no correlation. And another reason why this makes sense is half the data is going up, half the data is going down. Well, obviously, it's going to kind of bounce you out at a correlation of zero. So zero is basically a terrible, very weak correlation. Now, the closer you get to positive one, the closer you get to negative one, the stronger or weaker you get, right? So anything close to zero is considered weak. Any R correlation close to the outsides, negative one and one, is stronger. So, you know, rather than have me just kind of say all this out loud, let's look at some examples to better understand this. So here are nine different scatter plots, and under each one is the approximate correlation. Again, don't worry about how I calculate these numbers. I use that ugly formula, but we're going to let a calculator or computer do it all for us. So, for example, in the top left here, we do see... 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is really strong. Like, you know, if you look at this scatter plot on the top left, I clearly, clearly, clearly see a positive line. Like, it's pretty obvious that the data is going in a positive direction, and the points are pretty close together, tightly forming that line. That's going to be a pretty strong correlation of 0.9. Um, this one next to it is going to be point negative 0.8. You could clearly see it's going down, so that's why there's a negative on the correlation there. And again, they're still pretty strong. You can clearly see a line being formed. It's not a perfect straight line by any means, but again, it's pretty strong. And then here's a 0.7. So it's again, it's going up. So that's why it is positive. But it's kind of starting to get a little bit more scattered, right? Like I could still clearly see a line. I could clearly see positive, but it's starting to be more scattered, which is why the R value is starting to get a little bit lower. Um, here is a negative 0.6. Again, negative because it's clearly going down. 0.6 because oh, I'm starting to see some more scatter there. It's not, it's becoming weaker, right? And then right smack dab in the middle, we have 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is going to be like right in between weak and strong. Like, okay, it's positive. I definitely see an overall positive trend, but it's getting kind of hard to see that trend. Like it, it, it's really difficult. It's not that great, which is why it has a weaker R value of 0.5. Um, here, over here, we have a, um, negative 0.4, again, getting really weak at this point. So I, I could still see maybe an overall negative trend, like the dots do appear to be going from left to right. They do appear to be going down, but it's just so hard to see. And again, that's why it's negative 0.4. And then we're going to get even weaker and weaker here. So here's a positive 0.3. This is very weak. I mean, to me, this looks like a giant swarm. I mean, if you put a line through it, you could maybe see that there is a slight positive trend, 
but God, it's very weak. So that's why we're getting a zero there. And then here is a negative 0.2. Um, I'm not even sure it's negative, but it does appear to be maybe barely negative, but it's just so hard to tell. And then finally, we end with an extremely weak correlation of 0.1, where at this point, we're so close to zero, so weak. It looks like these dots have nothing to do with each other. It's just complete scatter. So that's kind of this idea of why correlation does measure strength. It's on this scale, negative one to one. Keep in mind the negative one to one are good, strong, nice and straight. And then um, positive just meaning positive, negative just meaning negative. Negative does not mean bad by any means. And then the closer you get to the middle of zeros where you become weaker. All right, so let's talk about some more cold hard facts about correlation. So correlation is used only to examine the relationship between two quantitative variables. Hey, I said this earlier, pretty sure it's important, so I'm saying it again. You would never ever use correlation if one or both variables are categorical. Many people do use the word Morse correlation. In fact, as a statistics teacher, I think it's kind of funny to correct people when they do misuse it. I tend to do it a lot if I hear it. But um, I always challenge kids, you know, find an article, find uh, an internet or a newspaper article that says, that uses the word correlation incorrectly. It's a good challenge, but it is so often used incorrectly. Most people um, think correlation just means that there's a relationship. No, if they're not quantitative, don't ever use the word correlation, right? Um, you know, we just got done in the couple um, topics ago talking about categorical data. You can have an, a relationship in categorical data. We call that an association. You know, one variable impacts the other variable. That's an association. We would just never use the word correlation there because it's specifically used for looking at linear um, relationship between two quantitative variables. All right, more cold hard facts. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, correlation has no units. Remember, it's used with z-scores, so don't give it any units. It has no units whatsoever. We just give it the number value, right? Um, correlation does not imply causation. This is huge. Even if you have a strong correlation, even if it's like literally exactly positive one or exactly negative one, don't ever say, this means X causes Y. The explanatory causes the response. It's just so hard to use that word cause. Um, they could be strongly related, but don't ever use the word cause, right? It's very hard, difficult to say, oh, if X goes up, it will in fact cause Y to go up or vice versa, right? So please be careful. Correlation does not imply causation. Stay away from that word causation or cause. All right, um, I also mentioned this earlier, but I'll mention it again. Switching the X and Y will not change correlation. Now, don't just freely do that, right? In a very specific problem, in context, it definitely matters what variables the explanatory, what, var what variables the response. I mean, you got to make your scatter point. You got to know which is which. But in terms of R itself, R itself, just that one aspect does not care. If you were to flip flop who's your X and who's your Y, correlation would not change. Um, however, keep in mind that if data points are added or removed, then correlation will change, right? So if you're just going to take a data point away or add a data point to your data, then it definitely can change R. And I want to actually show some examples of that. So here are four graphs and all of them probably have a decent correlation, right? First off, I hope everybody recognizes that all four of these are the same. And as they currently stand, all four of them are positive and pretty strong, like the dots make a nice strong line. Like I don't see a perfect line, so maybe this would be like a, you know, 0.87. I'm just kind of making that up. But you know, it's pretty strong, it's positive, pretty close to one, that points seem to be forming a line. Okay, now let's talk about a couple different points and how they could affect correlation. If I were to add a point like this right here, add this red point, how would that affect correlation? Well, it would actually strengthen it. Because a point like that fits the pattern. It elongates the pattern. It, it fits in line with the direction that these points are going. So a new point like this would add to the value of correlation. It would, it would increase the correlation, like almost confirming that it is a positive trend. So this might increase it maybe to 0.9. I mean, I don't know exactly what it's going to increase to, but it's definitely going to increase your correlation. Um, and the same could be said for a point like this as well. Again, it continues it, right? Um, other things you could do are add a point like this, right? If I add this red point. Now, it doesn't extend the pattern, but it fits the pattern. The more points that fit the pattern that you see are only going to increase or strengthen your correlation. Now, remember, if it's negative, it's going to make me more negative, right? Okay. So what would be some points that would 
that would hurt R, that would make it weaker. Well, a point like this maybe, right? point like that is going to weaken your correlation because it clearly does not fit the pattern. You know, that particular value has a Y coordinate that is much higher than all the other Y coordinates. Its X coordinate is kind of in the middle, but its Y coordinate's not. It doesn't fit the pattern whatsoever. That's actually going to weaken your R, so maybe it'll take us down to 0.8 or something like that. Now, I still have a lot of points that fit my pattern, but when you add a point, even one point that does not fit the pattern, it is going to weaken. And the same could be said if you were to add a point down here like this. Now, if I were to add a ton of points up here and a ton of points down here, then that would keep hurting my R. It would keep making my R weaker and weaker and weaker. All right, um, another point I could add that would um, hurt my correlation would be something like this right here, right? A point like this is um, an outlier in the x direction. So its x value seems to be really, really high compared to everybody else, even though its y value seems to be pretty normal, right? So it's in terms of y, it's amongst all the other values, but in terms of x, it is way out there. Again, this is going to hurt your r because it just... It doesn't fit the pattern. I mean, look at it. It doesn't fit the pattern. So when you add points that fit the pattern, whether they extend it or confirm it like this one right here, that is going to strengthen your correlation, make you closer to one or negative one. When you add points that just flat out don't fit the pattern, that is going to weaken your correlation and make you closer to zero. All right, just a couple more things to finish this video off. I can't emphasize this enough. Cor co correlation coefficient, R, is only used to describe strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. I've already said that probably three times. I can't say it enough. Being a mathematical formula, correlation can be found even if the data has a very clear curve in it, but it's only appropriate to use if it's somewhat linear, right? Remember, the formula is mathematical. All it's going to do is take a bunch of X's, take a bunch of Y's, and find their Z-scores, multiply them, and then do some division, and it's going to spit out a number. So even if you see a clear curve, you might get a correlation, but you need to know that if there's a curve in your data, don't ever use correlation. Let me give you an example of that to end this video. Here is a scatter plot that it's like a no-brainer. I clearly see a curve. It's a very, very clear curve. Now, if you try to find the correlation of this, well, there's data here, right? I mean, there is actual data here. There's numbers involved. Each point has an X, each point has a Y. If you plug that into a formula, you're going to get a correlation. You know what? You might even get a good correlation like 0.86. I don't know. But again, you need to recognize, wow, there's a giant curve. I would never use correlation to talk about the strength of this curve because it's a curve. Correlation is a specific value that is only used to measure the strength and direction of a linear relationship, a line between two quantitative variables. So keep that in mind, right? Just because your correlation is very close to one doesn't mean that there's this great linear relationship. If your scatter plot looks curved, there is no linear relationship. Don't use R. All right. Please keep all that in mind. Correlation is an awesome value that we're going to use more and more because remember this whole unit is looking at relationships between variables and R gives us a measurable way to understand that relationship only if you're two quantitative variables, you're linear, right? You got to make sure you meet all that and that's when you're allowed to talk about R. All right, guys, the next video is going to actually teach you how to use your calculator and or Google Sheets to find correlation. So watch it if you need to. But that's it. See you in the next video.